Yes, 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 yes. The blue, blue. The blue, blue. The blue, blue. You're listening. The Sonic Weekly, when you hear the flute loop, welcome back to the show. Welcome back to the program. Every seven days, we're delivering hot, piping hot Sonic content. To me, Grandpa, one of your hosts, also here with director of Burning Rangers and Sega Saturn Endeavors, Bo. Here we go, buddy. And the star of the show, Out from the Shadows. You know him. You love him. David the Lurker. Hi. Um, I guess you did an intro because the thing froze and crashed and then uncrashed. Thanks, Grant. Oh, hey, well, just, came just, back in time. just in time. Came back just in time to hear my name because I don't care who else is here. <laughs> Perfect. And uh, well, oh. you know, perhaps you've seen the uh, title of the episode, so you know that we have special guests returning to the show. Keith John Stack. Hello. Hi, Keith. Hi. Hey. How's it going? It's going great. And we have a new guest. Very glad to have Cybershell. Hey, Cybershell. Hey, thanks for having me on. Always glad to have an excuse to talk about Sonic because, you know, there's never enough of that in my life. <laughs> no, I think it's a new subject for you, and we're excited to just get it all out. All of the whole Sonic, the, whatever the strain, the gene, the Sonic gene that's in your brain, we're going to oh, yeah. pull it out. I'm jazzed. I'm jazzed about Sonic right now. I just got to see the symphony in Seattle a few days back, so I'm like, yes. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, yeah, you are jazzed. Right. Sonic, I guess being in a whole auditorium full of people cheering for like Sonic 06 when that shows up, I was like, nature is healing. This is, <laughs> the future is now. <laughs> and people are voting for Mephiles and Sonic Man. I mean, it's just, what a day. What a day to be alive. That's right. Yeah. Bo and I went to the L.A. Uh, uh, kickoff of the tour, and it was nice. one of the highlights of my stupid life. <laughs> they made Sonic and the Black Knight look awesome, and I didn't know that right. was possible. <laughs> it, the, it, the music is great. That was always helped. It was funny just because, like, you know, I'm just so video-brained. I was so focused on, like, what, like, what, what version of the game are they using? And for, like, all the, the Wii games, it was, like, the most crusty-ass 240p footage because it's, like, they didn't have it in higher quality. But I was just like, yes. Man, if this game was as fun as the pre-rendered cutscenes make it look, it would be the greatest game <laughs> of all time. <laughs> yeah, the symphony. I forgot that the symphony uh, is uh, the world tour is continuing. David, you're going to go, right? At some point, yes. Yeah. Uh, that is the goal. Uh, and we'll see when, because it'll be somewhere and probably not close somewhere and sometime yeah well we look forward to somewhere it. and sometime right right so we'll, f we'll figure it out and and when i know i'll go and then i'll tell people after the fact you won't believe what i did and they'll say oh what and i'll say i went to the symphony and they went yeah we all have so far and i'll be like oh but it's a secret no one knew it existed that's what i'll do david one of the things we do on this show is yeah. uh, <laughs> week, we, uh you usually will take us through the news yeah uh, i don't know if there's been any sonic news this week it seems like a, a bunch just dumped out of its uh bag let's go with that metaphor uh right before we started recording the news news was was a bit quiet until, until we all sat down there were a couple big things but i guess before that Oh, everyone found out that the OVA definitely isn't being released anytime soon, the Sonic OVA, in the West. So Martin Burke fans, you're going to have to keep waiting to hear his voice uh, in Blu-ray in 1080p, uh, which is unfortunate. Oh, and then apparently the current Japanese voice of Dr. Eggman is stepping away due to health reasons. Who knew? I'm just looking at Stadium. But I, am I correct in that the top two news stories is something is not coming out mm -hmm. and somebody is not doing anything? Those are the yeah, top. Yeah, those are the top news stories. Except, uh, right, last night, Woo, oh. Sonic Prime, which we've sort of talked about, but not really. That's true. It fi right, it's finally finished. It's 24, right? 24 episode run. The last eight episodes released on Netflix. And whoa. Um, haven't watched it. The very first thing my six-year-old said this morning when I went to wake him up, it's like, hey, buddy, it's time for school. He said, is it out yet? <laughs> Not quite awake. And we watched uh, about an hour of it. Oh. It's apparently doing, like, really good ratings-wise, right? Yeah, Netflix, according to Netflix, it's yeah. uh, putting up numbers. Yeah. Um, right, they released all those things. It was like, whoa, Sonic's up there. Things. Wow. We talked about this before. But yeah, it had good ratings. Will it continue to have good ratings? Maybe everyone's sonic out. Maybe no one cares this time. Or it'll be the number one show on Netflix across the board. Nobody cares about 
what, what do they still have on there? Stranger Things? Stranger Things, yeah. Yeah, it's like, what else is on Netflix? <laughs> can't think. Right. This is when I say uh, unrelated. Cyber Show, what's your favorite show on Netflix that doesn't feature Sonic the Hedgehog? Uh, that doesn't feature Sonic the Hedgehog? Yeah. Uh, that's a hard choice. I, I, I'm going to be honest, I've been subscribed to Netflix in a while, but I did, I did enjoy watching the first three seasons of Arrested Development on there when it was still... Again, I, I don't know if they took that off, but uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I got what... Do they have... I forget. Do they have the other old Sonic shows on there too? Are we, is there going to be like a new pipeline of kids watching Sonic Prime and then like auto-playing into Sonic Underground? <laughs> <laughs> they So this has been a big part of my life recently. So they do have Adventures Of on there and they have Sonic Boom on there. But for... Uh, Sonic Underground. I think you got to go to Amazon Prime, and for Sat AM, you got to go to like the Roku channel. Ah, you got to really got to piece it together. Right. God, that's how it is nowadays. It's all split across a million streaming services. But <laughs> that is good to know. I'm glad uh, they can get they can go be like after this like epic storyline of you know the new Sonic show. Like, let's see what they had back in the '90s. They put on Adventures, but they get to see that <laughs> glorious old Robotnik. He had style, but not OVA Eggman. That's sad. No. Right. Yeah. I'm sad that's not coming out. I mean, uh, it, I'm just a little bit like a, you know, fuck you, got mine. I got my nice fancy white VHS tape of the OVA. Oh, man. <laughs> Re release it all you want. Yes, it would be awesome to see <laughs> better quality, obviously, and, you know, any behind the scenes stuff that still exists or whatever. But uh, yeah, you know, I'd love to see the OVA. I love the OVA, but, you know, I'm not really. I was, I was never expecting to see it really re released because I just, it doesn't seem like that's a, uh, I mean, people go ape shit when there's a, like a Knuckles wearing a hat, you know what I mean? People are like, to, acknowledgement of it at this point is like huge news, let alone Sega gonna be like, yeah, we can work with someone to get that shit re released or whoever owns the rights to that currently. Mm hmm. I'm still coasting off the high of that uh, lookalike song being leaked in full. Oh, yeah, yeah. See, ago. that was great. That was big news. See, that's the only th hope I have now is like something gets leaked. You know what I mean? Not like an official release. <laughs> some shit gets leaked off some like, I don't know, server somewhere. <laughs> right. Like, have, have, have we ever seen even like a, a cell or a sketch or a storyboard, anything connected to the development of it or... I, mean, I don't think there are any cells of it. I think I would have remembered that when I was like going, had a little bit of a Sonic cell phase because I was just, they were like, oh, we're selling our last batch of Adventures cells. I was like, well, if it's the last batch, I better get some of those fucking things because, you know, <laughs> what if it's 50 years from now and I'm like on my deathbed? I'm like, wow, where's my fucking Sonic cells? But uh, yeah. Where did that one sketch of Sonic smoking a cigarette come from? Was that from the OVA staff or no. the. That's a CD. The Sonic CD. That was yeah. like just uh, a thing they had on the yeah production staff for cd it was like on their right when they got paid twelve hundred dollars to animate um or even less i forget how much it was but it was not a lot was it right yeah uh, i know a few recently. cells of the cd intro exist out there but i don't know how much of it and they weren't just like up for sale it was like a special giveaway type situation but yeah that's another one people love that that gets the reverence it deserves but the sonic ova people don't even know about it imagine how many more eyeballs that would have if it was on like netflix or something huh oh we we could we could hack uh hack television broadcasting signals and just have it play somewhere right it's the best chance we have of exposure to the ova i mean it's a kind of it's not like it's not like this so epic obscure thing only the most diehard sonic fans know. like it's pretty like people know about it but uh i don't know mm -hmm. all right well, it just doesn't get that love no, it used to be one of the first things you would see on YouTube typing in Sonic the Hedgehog. Right, I don't know yeah, if it I'm still sure, is. I'm sure but... for years you could just type in Sonic movie and watch the whole fucking thing. <laughs> Probably it's some shit ass quality, but uh, I don't even know. <laughs> now the quality is pretty good Yeah, on YouTube. It's pretty much the way I've only watched it. Well, yeah. I used to be in a position to like control TV signals and it was a real struggle to, you know, not patch in the Sonic OVA during the Super Bowl. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't know. I was just so fascinated as a kid because I was just like, you know, I knew about the American shows, but then I was like, this whole other take, and it, it just felt like there should be more of it. In my brain, I couldn't understand that you would only make two episodes. I didn't understand what an OVA <laughs> was. I was just like, where's the fucking rest of it? They they, park, <laughs> they they package it as a movie, but it's like so clearly like two episodes. Yeah. Did you guys see the like magazine preview of Sonic OVA and whatever? whether it was EGM or whatever it was, the two-page spread, that like sticks with me. I can't remember what magazine it was, but I remember it was a two-page spread with some of the screenshots from the OVA with uh, Sonic and Tails running from the Buzz Bombers and just thinking like, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen. And it was also around the time of Sonic the Fighters when that, so it was just like Sonic to me was looking better. That was, that's how Sonic should look to me. 
is OVA and Scythe Fighters, and everything else is fine, but that is at, in like the deepest corner of my brain. That's what Sonic really is. I don't know. I just saw it in Sonic Jam and went, oh, that's cool. Wait, where can I watch it? Yeah, that was my experience, yeah. Sonic Jam. And then found very fuzzy real media clips on the internet where I'm like, okay, <laughs> I think they're moving. Whoa, it's so cool. Yeah, it was also Sonic Media from that weird period of time between Three and Knuckles and Adventure 1 where it was just like, you know, any new Sonic anything is like, whoa, it's Sonic, you know? Like, it's so funny, like, 3D. <laughs> he was on hiatus, quote unquote hiatus for like five, actually four years, I guess, because, um, you know, uh, Adventure One came out in 98 in Japan. But like, fuck, it's like it felt that felt like such a huge amount of time with no Sonic stuff. And now there was like, you know, between like Lost World and Forces, that was also like a four year gap. But it was just like, whatever, it's just a normal part of Sonic history now. But uh, yeah, I mean, I like we, we had some serious Sonic droughts, but I, I feel like there's a good amount of healthy amount of like Sonic things going on right now. You know, the movie, the shows, just games last year, superstars. And, you know, I mean, we're not getting a new mainline game anytime soon. Exactly. But, you know, we had that all that DLC stuff. So it's like Sonic is he's in the public consciousness. He's out and about. He's not in Fortnite yet, but he will be. <laughs> is that a leak do you have an exclusive no, I don't, I don't leak? Know, that's just that's hope no thinking. no it's okay admit it earn it here first i mean okay shadow is going to be in an, a mainstream movie whoa i mean that's the closest we're ever going to get you know it's, that's a sonic character who could use a gun <laughs> okay right this this sort of leads into a story we're probably not going to talk about it much because one i haven't looked through it really i know it exists but speaking of sonic movie three and even the Knuckles show, which is supposedly still coming out. Oh, right. As we speak, breaking news two hours ago, according to Sonic Stadium, dating this podcast incredibly, uh, there were some storyboards leaked of the movie and of episode six, which is presumably the final episode of the Knuckles show. It's There's sequences. We won't talk about it. There's characters. Won't talk about it. Um, but Shadow does exist in Sonic 3, which... I don't even know if I want to look through all of it. I, I do like a spoiler from time to time, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Have you ever been hesitant about spoilers for the Sonic games at all? No. No. <laughs> Me neither. I... No, I've, I mean, right. Uh, I knew, I, I've known things. I mean, hell, when Sonic 06, the script leaked before that game came out, read the whole thing. I was like, I don't care. I need to read it. I've been a little, a little uh, spoiler fiend when it comes to the games, but. I don't know about the movie, maybe because it's like such a limited experience. It's two, two and a half hours. It's one thing. Mm -hmm. The game, it's like, oh, if I know all the story and I know what the levels are, I haven't experienced it yet. I haven't played it yet, but eh, that might have something to do with it. Also, maybe like when somebody whispered things to me about, oh, hey, did you hear these rumors about forces? It's like, well, it's probably going to be bad. So tell me. Friends with Zippo. Come on. <laughs> what? <laughs> I wouldn't say, look, uh, me and Zippo never spent a summer together in Italy. <laughs> I will deny that right now. <laughs> no, I, I know exactly what you mean. Like the game, you can have a game spoiled, but if you haven't played the game, right. you haven't experienced it yet. Whereas if you have the entire plot of the movie spoiled, then when you watch the movie, inevitably you're like, okay, well, this is going to happen. And then this is going to happen. And then this is going to happen, which again, it's not saying that ruins the movie or anything, but like, right. yeah, I, I didn't, I didn't see the full extent of this leak. I just saw there was like a two minute animatic. I like skimmed through it and I was like, yeah, this looks like it could be real. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know enough to say for sure. The only on the other hand, all I'll say is, who else would have a fandom like ours? Who this could easily be some deranged fan making this up <laughs> in his free time, spent months working on this fake leak just to own people. I mean, stranger things have happened. I'm just gonna assume it's the uh, like a shot for shot remake of the people reacting to the moon being blown up from Sonic Adventure Two, and <laughs> right, right. This oh, is, man. I mean, this is like those milk toast. Ever, anyone could have this take, but it's just like the more they just need to lean into take as much from SA Two as possible. That's my advice for whoever's <laughs> making the movie. I think, I think, I don't know how far along in development. I think it's a little too late to be taking advice like that if they haven't already. I mean, of course, it's the first game or the first movie of Shadow. They're gonna adapt some of it, but we'll see. Right. We shall see. <laughs> I feel pretty confident about it. I feel pretty good about it. We've talked with uh, one of the co-writers of the movie, Pat Casey, and he's definitely like they have a pretty they have like a fan's appreciation for Shadow and like how because mm -hmm. they were even like talking about like how to differentiate the arc from Knuckles because, you know, it's kind of like a rival that True. goes to a friend. And we just did the Knuckles thing. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. And he was like when he was talking about Shadow, he was like, well, 
Knuckle he, Sonic's never encountered somebody with like a, that as deep of a well of anger and hatred. Maybe Robotnik, but he's insane. Shadow is somewhat more like Sonic, but has that. Whereas Knuckles was misguided, but not angry at the world in the way that Shadow is. And I feel like that's kind of that's like a right approach to uh, looking at the character in in SA two context of it. So I'm probably not going to look at the spoilers. Usually, I don't give a shit about spoilers. I spoil me on everything, but uh, in this case, I don't. I, maybe I because with Sonic two. I feel like I knew everything going in. Like we, like we were really like hunting for details and like, and plus just the commercials, you could kind of piece it together the, with, with this one. I kind of would like maybe just to experience what a surprise might be like, because do you remember how surprising it was when Sonic movie one was good, <laughs> like going into the theater <laughs> All right. and I coming out, shocked. you were two different people. Right. I, want, I, want I don't to... know if it was possible to have lower expectations for that movie after that first trailer. So yeah, having that, you know, not be like people around me seem to enjoy it i was like wow it's a it's like a i'm watching a real movie or something i mean i certainly if i could you know bitch and moan have issues with it but uh i agree i'm more optimistic about this third one because they got all the normies in with the the your with your sonic ones and your sonic twos and your human characters now they can they can just do whatever they want in sonic it doesn't even matter at this point <laughs> they, they they might as well lean into the game stuff and i think they sort of have you know once you've made two successful movies they're probably just like, okay just you know do whatever you gotta do at this point <laughs> <laughs> yeah no and it's i it would be funny if there's less humans in a, at a time when they were adding more humans into sonic which uh right i would have a laugh that would be an ironic twist of fate but like is there a chance that'll be the case because of all the strikes that were happening i like do you think they'll lean into like more cgi characters more animals yeah <laughs> cgi environments because of that maybe we don't really know how much they i guess filmed during the strikes they were they were they did say hey we're filming we're filming things without people so i guess a lot of like hey here's a mountain maybe they pointed a camera and went spaces up there uh they showed the moon and they're like wow it, the director off screen is just like yeah you know it's great that the moon's in one piece and and then maybe they'll dub that over later with someone else but uh <laughs> and, uh i don't know man sonic thinking of the humans david and i and Bo too i think but david and i definitely have talked about this before but keith and cybershell i know you guys are obviously pretty in the weeds of sonic fandom do you also sense like from some fans like there's like a bloodlust for people being like hey you know you know who's gonna get shot in this movie a 12 year old girl is gonna oh, man. get shot in She's the back sh yeah it's gonna be like john wick for 15 minutes just on this one innocent girl oh no it's like there's like a huge enthusiasm for this oh i have noticed that as well i've seen people i've seen quite a few references to that like do you know that you just know they're gonna render this scene in a hyper realistic blood and it's gonna be epic but it's like it, you know, it just i was like it was like rated pg-13 or something it's like you just they you just know it's gonna be this girl's gonna get her fucking head blown off and there's gonna be blood <laughs> all over the camera lens like that one shot at breaking bad it's gonna be fucking awesome bro <laughs> but no it's like uh i mean it, they're probably gonna keep it do you know do it as pretty much like the games where you don't like it's not a graphic detail it's more it, the implication is enough really with the gunshot and the i just do hope we get an awesome shot of the guy holding up the gun like they have in that in the shadow cg intro love that guy i don't know if he has a name the guy who shoots maria <laughs> i hope it's tom wachowski senior that would be I great i mean yeah they might yeah. as well make it a character like that that'd be awesome uh, i think he had a name in in x in sonic x i don't remember the name oh right it, yes more x continuity that because yeah they use elements from like the game scripts that didn't even make it in so that stuff right. has canon canonosity to it if you want to look at it like that yes there is a scene where yes an old man sits sad and i think he's talking to chuck and mr tanaka or whatever and he's like yeah i did it i murdered her and i'm so sad about it and you're like whoa the redemption arc <laughs> yeah i don't remember i mean you know i i have a hard time with x so it's not like i have it memorized but I, I he must have had a name unless he just called him old man it must be something in the script at least yeah we'll see <laughs> we'll see how they handle it um yeah i'm curious i'm curious as to how many elements they're going to condense down and how many like, you know, because people are like, is Rouge going to be in it? And like, I, I don't know if they're going to have time to introduce all these characters that people want to see. Like, you know, I'd love for them to have a, had a chance to adapt Gamma somehow, but there's just not enough screen time to fit in that whole story mm -hmm. arc just on the side. You know what I mean? You really have to cut it down to the bare essentials. But you know what? Um, people love Shadow. I was almost surprised. I mean, I wasn't surprised. I knew this, as, but it's just like when I was at the symphony, I think the loudest 
Cheers guy was when the Shadow stuff. Every time Shadow was on screen, people love that edgy hedgehog. People love him. And I think uh I think I think general audiences will respond well to Shadow too. We're finally at the age where it's like you people there's a long period of time people are like Shadow, that's cringe. He's, he's too edgy, he's too cringe, but we're finally at an age where people are ready to admit that Shadow is cool. Whoa. The coolest. He's been exactly. saying it. <laughs> exactly. Right. I knew he was cool the moment he ate, said he ate Hot Pockets. 2005. I think I mentioned it on this show, but when I saw the movie in the theaters, there was just like a whisper of kids behind us when the when he came on the screen like, Shadow. Right. If they don't think it's Sonic the ADXC, then they'll know and they'll be excited for him, for sure. People <laughs> it's are crazy enjoy though, it. how long Shadow has kind of been on the shelf outside of Sonic Prime. Like, Sonic right. Forces episode Shadow was a drought ago that was 2017 right. that was a long time ago now mm-hmm. and now we are in the year of shadow so don't know what's coming but obviously movie three but theoretically it does seem like shadows being positioned with prime and maybe just in general to be like uh he's like the batman to sonic's superman he's, right no that's a that's a really good point, actually. Now, now, cause, just because you're right, it's like he was on the shelf. It's like he just, you know, when they got with the whole, like, oh, Sonic's friends, you know, the overcorrection from when they completely, like, you know, they didn't even want to mention Knuckles existed for, you know, in Unleashed or, or you know, I mean, I guess he's right. technically in, but you know what I mean? It's like, but now, and I was just thinking, because I didn't even really think of this so much back in the day, but like the success of the movie obviously is going to have a feedback and impact, you know, the games to some degree. So, you know, Shadow being a prominent member of this movie, if it does well, I could see Sega being like, oh, let's just have a Shadow be a main character in the next game. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Unless they're planning ahead for synergy and we get something. <laughs> we get something in the end of the year. They wouldn't not put out a game a third time for their hit movie. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I can't wait. I want a gaming equivalent to Street Fighter the movie, the game. That's what I demand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I would have I loved a bad license title. That would have been awesome. They should have made it for the PS2. They should have made Sonic the movie, the game for the PS2. Whoa, right. And then there's a shoddy Wii port as well. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Before we move into uh, a sort of grab bag of conversational topics, did we cover Rings of Saturn yet? Did we cover the big bug news on the <laughs> docket? Yeah, so in, in recent weeks, uh, I've become good friends with the Clockwork Knight fandom. Yeah, they're yes. still out there. I saw about yeah. this, the new discovered cheat code, which I, it's so funny. I was so excited when I saw that. I was like, holy shit, this is amazing. I, I, I wish I, could, I knew more people I could tell about this who would care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we mentioned the, the Toy Story really just took the wind out of the sails of that Clockwork Knight uh, contingent back in the day. Should have sued. <laughs> uh but yeah i uh i broke somebody asked me like hey there's a there's a cheat code on listen for bug for infinite lives and it doesn't work can you can you look and see what's the deal and uh i found they were right it doesn't work but there's a there's another cheat code so the, the one we knew was baby seals so you put that in you get kind of a level select thing and then there's another one sexy weasels so like <laughs> s is s is south for d-pad down and then east and and so on that gives you uh what do you want to call it like debug mode kind of like in the sonic games where you can position your guy wherever you want somebody on sonic retro pointed out to me uh that you could do this and so i immediately went to the part where you race sonic like bug races sonic in in that game and i don't think anybody's seen this since 1995 if you use your little debug mode to go onto the same plane as sonic you can jump on him and kill him what it's great (laughs) hell yes that's amazing. Yeah, I did not know that. I mean, I guess I didn't know Bug had a debug mode, obviously. But yeah, I was aware of that little cameo, but that's very funny. <laughs> All right. Yeah, the debug mode, brand new. Okay, here's a pitch. Replace the Sonic Sprite with Maria's model. <laughs> and... <laughs> Give the people what they want. Right, and that's what we're going to see. That's how it's going to be done in Sonic 3. So. <laughs> that is crazy, though, to think about. Like, you know, it's one thing for like, you know, oh, there is a hidden thing in a level, like hidden object that no one discovered. But like, how are you supposed to just find these button combinations? You know what I mean? Other than decompiling the game and just like looking through it. I mean, <laughs> think of how many other un like solved cheat codes put in by some crazy dev who was like, I'll, I'll reveal this. I'll, I'll get I'll like sell this cheat code to uh, some gaming magazine for 200 bucks in the future. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't know. Well, somebody who did testing for Sega reached out to me and said, hey, I think that might have been for us. So oh, that, that uh, makes maybe perfect more sense. To, to be determined. Yeah. Right. You haven't found the entirety of Bug One 
hidden in bug two. <laughs> <laughs> no, not yet. I haven't, yeah. I haven't opened up bug two yet. Oh, well, it's time to crack it open. We'll do it live. Let's see what you find. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a live shot of Bo reading binary code. <laughs> we have to put a franchise tag on Bo from the Sonic fandom. So, because like these, like the, you know, bug and clockwork night, they're getting ambitious in terms of wanting to, poach bow i think i think you, it's time to like re you know you started with like 3d blast and uh the special stages sonic jam uh that's it for you know but that's all the sonic on saturn famously uh i don't think you're gonna be digging around in sonic extreme code probably i i have opened it up to see if the rumor was true about yuji naka throwing a fit and not letting him use the knights engine like okay well let's see how similar this is to the knights engine and uh not at all. Not at all. No. <laughs> okay. I, I, I mean, I don't think they really made much in the Knights engine. It, it feels like they were given it and they played around with it for like three weeks and then were told no. I, I, I don't I don't believe the story at all. I, I think the Knights engine is so complicated that oh, they would be like. I mean, I think they whatever they did with it, maybe at most they, they just got it to <laughs> exist. They changed maybe, like the color of Knight's hat and then yeah i don't know right because well i mean Knight's development even though we know so much about it it's kind of sort of a tangent but like we know so much about what happened but we also don't really know exactly how it how it how it went down i've i've looked at like the dates and tried to figure it out and like when certain things happened and when certain people left and when certain people almost died but <laughs> some of the dates just don't line up and i'm like uh, someone is mis i guess you know 15 years later people are misremembering things but especially like when it switched from the like when point of view got involved and how long that existed and then when eventually it was christina coffin's engine and how much time she had to work on it before she almost died and then also like yasuhara stuff because somebody going through like the point of view uh files there's certain things that haven't been released completely and there are level maps of yasuhara's levels being used in the point of view engine which is based on ofer allen's engine which is like wait when did so what because i always thought yasuhara came on like last minute chris has gone ofer has gone and I, and it's like whoa but i guess there's a bit more overlap and even i think certain people don't really know so i get confused because it's confusing sonic's confusing i who thinks about sonic no one why would you yeah we need like a david fincher social network type movie <laughs> about the development of knights because clearly a lot of crazy shit was going down i mean i've seen some videos about knights development and cut content and yeah it is like i mean i feel like all making just making a 3d game in that era must have been so fucking hard to do right i want a list of everyone who almost died working at sega because i feel like most employees in that social network vi uh movie mm -hmm. uh you gotta have somebody come in and be like because you know he goes oh you drop the the you can be like knights add into dreams and ellipses ah <laughs> I mean, Knights is, I, I mean, some, the, whenever someone, I can't even remember what someone pointed this out to me, I was like, oh, that makes Knights the greatest game of all time. It's a game about dreams. So it's like when you have a dream about Knights, that's canon. That's actually like you're still <laughs> playing the video game. So you can just dream up new levels. And like, <laughs> that's still, you're just having fun with Knights. I mean, that's how the game ends. That's true. true. Uh, yeah. Well, okay. Not everyone has that fifth idea or idea, idea, you know, the red one. <laughs> it's the red I one, right? I said idea. Yeah. Yeah. Idea. Right. So if you're dreaming and playing with knights, that means you're one of the special kids. You're not, you're not, you're not a lame-o. You're not a generic person. You... Exactly. And if you never had to dream about knights, that does, that means you are lame. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, what about people who have dreams about burning rangers? What does that mean? <laughs> if you have dreams about burning rangers, please contact me. <laughs> <laughs> right. Are you the one putting the fire out or are you the one starting it, waiting for them to show up? There's so many possibilities. See, that's the thing is like, I feel like maybe I have had dreams about knights, but knights wasn't in them. I was dreaming about Claris. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you really wanted to be Elliot when you were a kid. You were really into basketball and you wanted to date a girl who wanted to be a singer celebrating the 100th anniversary of the town you were living in. That's right. Yeah. And I wanted to share Christmas together. Right. And then you wanted to, yeah, you wanted to slip and fall uh, and break your, uh, some bone down there. I don't know which one. Sure. Uh, yeah. I was trying to think of a name, but I can't think of it. Yeah. 
Keith, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing good. <laughs> right, you're just hanging out. Yeah, I know I'm you're just chilling. You, you're chilling because you you brought us Cybershell. You scooped him up. I I, I <laughs> sent him a direct message. You've been carrying him in a papoose, and then you you let him let him free, which right. is why well, he's as here. As I alluded to earlier, I'll never turn down an opportunity to talk about Sonic with my fellow Sonic heads. Oh God, <laughs> keeping that... the dream alive. Right. The only the only real Sonic fans. Yeah. Well, hey. we're the only ones who appreciate the series the correct way. <laughs> That's right. I. <laughs> well, here, let's ask this question. We, I think we sometimes ask this, ask this, ask this. Uh, hey, Cybershell, you've probably said this at some point, but how did you discover Sonic the Hedgehog? That's a very good question. And uh, to me, it was just when I was a kid, uh, Sonic 2 was the first game I ever played. So in my mind, every game is just a different kind of Sonic 2. So like when I see a JRPG, oh, this is like a version of Sonic 2 where you run around and you hit people and numbers pop up. You know what I mean? Like I can only conceptualize video games through the lens of them being different kinds of Sonic because I just would play that over and over. Uh, it was actually my grandma who had a Sega Genesis. She was interested in video games. So I would go to her house and I would just play the classic Sonic games. But Sonic 2... Uh, Sonic 3 Knuckles is my favorite, but at the time, Sonic 2 is easier just like pick up, go do a little playthrough. It's shorter, I guess. But so, yeah, I don't know. That's why I always had sort of a fascination with those games. And uh, yeah, I got my start online with like a Sonic Let's Play, which it was, I only made it. And this wasn't even to throw shade at the other guy, but there, there was only like one guy who'd ever done like a Sonic Let's Play on the Something Awful for me. So I was like, he didn't do a good enough job. I have to show people how cool <laughs> these games are. So I, that's like the main reason I went through them. And it was like, during, you know, I was like, I would like look at the maps of the levels before I would go through and try and like show off the cool secret areas that people didn't know about. I don't know. I just had it in my head because I mean, that was like a period of time. That was like 2007, 2008. People weren't so keen on Sonic back then. It was not the necessarily the greatest <laughs> time to go around being like, I'm a huge Sonic fan. Uh, yeah, I remember when those were new and they were pretty revelatory because it all it all connects back to what uh, something awful. And then it mm -hmm. spun off into <laughs> like it's the secret. It's the secret origin of Let's Plays. It came from something awful, but I never paid. I never paid the wise the decision. Much. I yeah. can honestly tell you, <laughs> <laughs> right? I mean, especially after everything else that came out. But you know, I was still. I had I had friends who did, and they would funnel me things and be like, "Whoa, look at this humor <laughs> from right. something awful that's behind your pay this paywall," and be like, "Oh yeah, I like humor." <laughs> Yes, internet humor used to be like, oh, what a concept. Humor on the internet. We could go to a website for humorous <laughs> articles and pictures. That's right. Nobody uh, had humor <laughs> in the early internet. You read Yusen on the 80s, they're all like, wow, have you seen this thing? But one day we'll all die. And you're like, no. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. Again, it was just, uh, I, I, I'm not even, my old Let's Plays weren't even that good. It was just like the concept of doing, I mean, this, any level of video editing, any level of just mm -hmm. remote, like, any like you know post-production people were just like losing their minds like oh my god he actually like edited the video <laughs> again i can't tell you how low <laughs> standards were the fact you weren't pointing a camera at the screen was enough to be like good <laughs> good you're doing a good job <laughs> uh, there was a part of me that misses people just pointing cameras at um yes me i become and... nostalgic for it even though at the time i was a snob oh. I was like i would never watch a let's play of someone who doesn't even have capture software what are they an idiot <laughs> <laughs> yes i used i used to watch uh me and the secret goon whose name i won't mention uh we would sit and watch let's plays like of sonic r of just some kid pointing the camera uh, or somebody who clearly had no idea what they were doing playing sonic and i'd be like ha, they don't know how to play sonic and like we would just we would just i guess make fun of children is what yes. it sort of ended up being i mean we were also young it was at the wholesomely time. making fun of children people don't understand right. it used to be it was acceptable it was it was <laughs> expected you're supposed to make fun of the children for playing the game wrong but it's funny right. I, I like to you know say oh just trivial let's plays or just silly videos who cares which is you know obviously true to some extent but then you actually think how many people have only experienced Sonic games through Let's Plays, or like mm -hmm. at least that's their main way. Like way more people probably saw people bitch and moan about Sonic 06 <laughs> and someone playing it badly. Not to be an apologist, but like you know what I mean. Like you know that that affects the the public consciousness. I should say. <laughs> 
Right. It's true. Uh, and with Sonic 06, uh, I played it and liked it. I liked the it's broken and unfinished and not good. But like mm-hmm. there are parts of it that remind you of Sonic Adventure 1. And I was like, oh, yes. my perception of this game was hugely distorted by the Internet culture of it being like, oh, it's the worst. The, <laughs> the, the loading you... times, the loading times give you time to check your phone. That's <laughs> yes. great. Yes, it's pure You're rich kid, right. maybe. <laughs> no. Right. But it, 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 that's why it ages so well. Aged like a wine. Oh, man. yeah, exactly. But they it is knew. funny. It's true, though. Like you said, if you go in having played the adventure games, you will have a skill set that will allow you to do OK enough at Sonic 06, to the point where you're not gaming over and, you know, having to restart levels over and over again, which is going to give you another horrible. I mean, there's already enough reasons, legitimate reasons to dislike <laughs> it, let alone. Yeah. <laughs> you don't need to be making extra hurdles for yourself. But again, not like I'm not saying sure. how dare you not have played the adventure games, but I'm just saying you, it's possible to have a way worse time with 06 than the average person. <laughs> Oh. And the, I was thinking about Let's Play, like the the videos were definitely like a big development in Let's Plays, but I also really liked the threads where it was people posting screenshots and oh, then yes. like summaries of what. So that's how I like, I was a fan of Metal Gear Solid before I ever played Metal Gear Solid, just because I liked following it along through those threads because the, the lore is so dense. It's also bananas and insane and whatever, mm-hmm. but like it's so dense that you're just like feasting on it. Uh, uh, some anyway. game series work good in the screenshot of people like that just a sort of format that kind of died off unfortunately but yes i'm also nostalgic for that like some rpgs and certain like adventure games like you know some games aren't necessarily great to put on video again if rpg if you have to do a bunch of grinding and stuff you can just like be like oh and then i ground you know it did grinding here and then you can just like type out all the dialogue but uh, i don't know those those just couldn't like you know, there's not like a place for them now. Like, who's gonna like? What are you gonna put a screenshot? Let's play on Twitter. Like, what? what, what, what <laughs> it's like, there's no room for it. Yeah, it's a bummer that those died out. They could come back. Yeah, David. Yes. Hello. I'm gonna bring him back. Yes. Um, let's plays. We're gonna. Yeah, let's just bring back let's plays. I think people have stopped doing them. Like, right. There's a few stalwart heroes, like you know, Chugga Conroy, the guys who just are still out there grinding them out but for the most part yes let's play has just evolved into twitch streaming which is really not the same thing it's not at all yeah i i I always used to be like you know we used to be such snobs about it on something (laughs) awful like you know how dare you do a blind let's play and show everyone your raw unfiltered reaction you're supposed to play the game like 28 times learn all the secrets learn all the lore (laughs) and explain it to people as you're playing competently you're not supposed to get lost and make people watch you be lost for 30 minutes (laughs) even though of course People's raw reaction, that turns out to be the thing people wanted the most. It was like, we would look at Markiplier and you do like Five Nights Freddy's. Like, look at this fucking idiot. He doesn't even know how to do Let's Plays. <laughs> turns out he knew how to do Let's Plays. Let's put it that way. Right. <laughs> yeah I, I guess hypothetically it's a part of a group called ftcr and we do the pre-recorded we're watching footage that's already been done i guess like three people watch those but that's i mean cool. i still enjoy them in theory it's just i mean again yeah. they do exist but uh, they do exist for the yeah. most part culturally twitch streaming just sort of became the predominant form i guess because it's easier although mm-hmm. i will say i used to be a snob about this because i'd be like i would have to like think about my videos and then i would have to like you know write things out and like do all these notes they just have to turn on the camera and play and talk that's so easy and then i tried to do a little streaming and it's like it's actually way harder to do those things confidently <laughs> than you at the same time than you might think at least it was for me <laughs> So I do have I do have a modicum of respect. I can't pretend like streaming is in its own skill set. It's just a different thing than Let's Plays, which again, right. you know, they just, they had their time in the limelight. It's not like the greatest tragedy of the modern age, writing a New York Times piece <laughs> of the fall of Let's Play. Hey, that, that could be a number one bestseller if you write that book. We're at the point where people are nostalgic that literally it could be, which is the funny part. I always say stupid ideas like that, but then it's like, <laughs> that literally could be, it probably does exist to some degree. Right, yeah. and then... Right. Somebody will write that book. They'll become a millionaire from that book because they'll also uh, license it out. And you're going to see on Hulu a six part miniseries about the yes. history of Let's Plays. Yes. And like in episode two, somebody is going to be playing you. It's probably exactly. going to be Tom Holland. I hope so. I want to do yeah, just like a Ken Burns, like black and white old timey documentary <laughs> or like interviewing slow beef make an old person makeup or something and just be like oh yes i remember super metroid I, I had this crazy idea for the immortal or i would record the game what i was talking about <laughs> it's funny because people always point back and be like there's other there's previous examples you know it existed before that people like you know talking into like a mic recording their gameplay on vhs like of mm-hmm. course that existed <laughs> but like let's play as a cultural concept got its sort of foundation uh, there that's right Right. Oh, that reminds me, I did that 
when I was a kid, oh. I recorded myself playing through the original Sonics and Sonic Adventure. And then I also transcribed the Sonic Adventure script from the footage I recorded. You know, being like, <laughs> yeah, oh, I yeah. can relate. I, I, for some <laughs> inexplicable reason, I couldn't tell you why I thought I had to do this. I mm -hmm. like recorded the opening like six hours of Donkey Kong 64 to a series of VHS tapes <laughs> because I was, I was like, someday I'm going to want to remember. <laughs> right. I don't know why I didn't think like I would just play the fucking game again. But I had those tapes for a long time. And I was just like, man, why do I have this? Why did I think this was important? Well, it really game... was like Game this cartridges come and go, but VHS exactly. Is I was forever. like, yeah, I'll just have the tapes, and then <laughs> I don't have to actually go through that. I think even at the time, I knew I was like playing this game is such a chore. I'll just record myself playing it, so I never have to actually play it again. <laughs> if I can remember what it was like. <laughs> And then years later, that's why you are such a big member of the Donkey Kong 64 yes. community. They, they love me over there. They love <laughs> me. I do have one Donkey Kong 64 video, and uh, that actually, I got to talk to a guy who makes Donkey Kong 64 videos. You know what? I, I get a lot of respect for the people in that community. It's a, you know That's a very glitchy game, and there's some really interesting tech you can do with it. I guess I'll leave it at that. <laughs> I really wanted to come to Nintendo Switch Online. I I've, haven't played it since the N64, uh, and I got tired of it pretty early like I, I i'm sure i didn't finish it so i definitely didn't collect all of the things and <laughs> play with lanky and all of the characters like I, I didn't hunt but now i have like more of an appreciation for one collectible type games uh and also just like the rare games of that era and uh and also 100 percenting games i've kind of gotten into doing that donkey kong 64 being so you know big and ambitious i guess uh i want to revisit it Mm -hmm. there, uh, it, it's nothing wrong with going through it the way god intended you know regular <laughs> emulation style but there are like rom hacks now where you can like like press a shoulder button and instantly you know just change kongs on the go which makes the game a lot more you know there's a lot less backtracking but uh i mean it's it, it doesn't it doesn't fix all the damn problems but it's it's something <laughs> let's put it that way uh, so there's like a project 06 for donkey Kong. yeah there's there's Four, fans amazing. making stuff out there it's not quite project 06 levels of that that project is like like that shouldn't exist. Like the fact that exists is one of those weird anomalies. You know what I mean? But you know, like, you know what's even kind of wilder it. is there's a, a Sonic 06 levels in generations patch. I can't think of the name of it, but like they make the Sonic 06, right. Sonic yes, 06 levels into that. boost it, it levels. Like, but it's like, yeah, it's, it's actually incredible. It's like you're playing the levels. It's not just like they, it's not like they just dump the maps in. You know what I mean? They actually, no, like, it, it's, it's, yeah. it's a real project, it, which again, it's almost crazy that someone would go to that effort when project 06 exists. You know what I mean? But like Sonic fans are just, they just go the next level when it comes to making weird mods of things. <laughs> and I love them for it. Absolutely. Right. Because once upon a time, it was simply just, here's a little click and create thing. I guess technically, <laughs> traditionally, the first Sonic fan game is Sonic Boom. By it's Martin Sonic Braid. Boom, not, yes. By Martin Braid, right. Even though yes, there was... good friend of ours. Yeah. And it's just Sonic and Tails sliding across. Uh and then they shoot apples they shoot yeah. app for some reason because i guess it's a sad am game because then there was a hack of that game called rotor boom where sonic was replaced with rotor the walrus well wasn't it because uh in click and play uh the apple graphic was like one was of the built-in <laughs> that's gotta games. be the answer yeah that makes perfect sense <laughs> yeah i think like the explosion was also a, like a, a click and play history. I think I actually remember that exact like program. I think I remember like just making stupid crap and then being like, "Wow, making a game is so much work." Thank God other people <laughs> will do that for me, and I can just play the game. Ah uh, man, I have spent a number of hours trying to track down Martin Braid. <laughs> I mean, there's something so heroic about just playing a Sonic game, being like, "I'm just gonna make my own damn Sonic <laughs> game," especially before you know a hundred thousand of those existed. You know, not not at all to diminish anyone who wants to make a new Sonic game. Like, go for it. I mean. Mm -hmm. we're just getting even better and crazier fan games now it's crazy it's almost like i feel bad because it's just like every time i want to make a fan game video i'm just like well i gotta talk about this game i gotta talk about this game i gotta talk about this game i gotta talk about right. you know, Robo 2. I gotta talk about this there's just so many amazing things coming out and it's like mm -hmm. so like i don't know to not talk about one i feel like i'm i'm giving it you know the short end of the stick mm. i have been meaning to play uh 16 bit triple trouble yes and that's I a good one that's a great one it, it's really it's good. quite good you yeah. guys all played it to completion it's good, and, it's yeah. good. Okay. Um, I mean, I was never like a huge. I just never. I, it's not like I don't know anything. I never played them, but I was never the biggest Game Gear head. Like I know there's just fans who love those particular, you know, the Master System games. So I like, I, you know, I'd play through them just as like more of a novelty. I was more into the Genesis games. So like, I, I was aware of Triple Trouble, but like, it was really interesting. Like actually being like, wow, it's they basically just, you know, he's like maniafied Triple Trouble. That's really the best way to put it. 
there's a moment in there where you're playing as Knuckles on Angel Island and you're coming up and you're kind of like going up to the left, which is kind of weird. Like normally it's a left to right game, but you're going right to left. And then it opens up to the part where Knuckles sees the plane as Sonic 3 and Knuckles ends. And you're like, holy shit, this is the most brilliant game ever. Leaves it's, off a lot right of, there. it's a lot of love and effort to make a game like that and being knowing full well that it's just, you know, just for the, you know, not just for the hell of it, but like, you know, you're not gonna be able to sell it and make money off it. You know what I mean? Right. So I don't know. Not that, you know, something's automatically better just because it's not commercialized, but like that is like, you got to say that's, that's some dedication right there. Absolutely. I, we, we've talked about this too, David, like it, just the desire for somehow there to be some sort of like fan game to official release pipeline some sort of i wish like, it was easier wouldn't that be so great be, if, if sega could yeah. just look at that and be like this is great yeah i mean right. like Thank for god's that. sake there's no reason to be so precious about it sega you've released plenty of dog shit <laughs> in the day so just see something good and be like yeah let's make it right. i mean the only the thing is it's like it's already been released yeah. for free it would be weird to be like now it's not fucking free you bitches but it should like, be I mean, like it's sports. so good i wouldn't even mind paying for it but i know a lot of people don't have that mindset right well i guess right because i think about uh uh valve and uh, you know half-life black mesa like that was just a fan thing and then Oh, you have to buy it. You have to pay for it. You have to pay money to actually play mm-hmm. it now. So Capcom did uh, something similar with that Mega Man X Street Fighter game. That was just right. like a fan game in development, and they were like, "Yeah." I think some reps from Capcom USA saw it. They were like, "Yeah, this is good. Can we? It's possible. Just make it official. You That's know? right. That's what needs to happen. They yeah, they should be able to call you up to the majors. How, if Nintendo was just chill about this, because they have, they have, you know, people are like frothing in the mouth to make Nintendo fan games. They're just like afraid to do it. You know what I mean? It's crazy. I mean, again, it's like they just they're ch- taking all of that pent up energy. Like you have, if you wanted to make a Mario game, too bad. Just make Mario Maker <laughs> levels, bitch. That's all you're allowed to do. <laughs> Right. It's, it's the, the secret underground uh, market of Nintendo fan games where you, in whispers you can still trade like, it's copies. It's like high of... artisan level. Like they've got like patrons like putting out like tens of thousands of dollars for like custom Mario fan games. Only like two people are ever allowed to play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Like that, that, That's it. That's what we get. Yeah. I want to be part of that underground scene. We could just trade copies of Metroid 2. That's what ASMR, the real billionaires videos. are doing. You know, they have they have like their own underground video game development scene where they're making <laughs> actually good games and they're not fucking sharing them with us. <laughs> that's like regular AAA bullshit. They're getting the quadruple A, the really good stuff. <laughs> just for them. Just in the bunkers. Which which game company is gonna do the Wu Tang clan thing of like, all right, there's one copy of this, we're gonna auction it off. Uh, someone must have by now. It's it's too tempting a business model. You know they love this like artificial scarcity. It's the ultimate way to pump up a price for something for no reason Mm -hmm. Uh, they could do that with doom right like whoa we've gotten rid of every copy of doom and there's only one left it only works on this lg washing machine though (laughs) 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 well oh yeah what what's uh what are other favorite fan games of just uh uh Rubble last two card i have to say just a little shout out to that i was always um impressed by that just because it's like you know i don't know the level of modding like it's like a mod of a mod of a freaking thing of the doom engine it's like i always love looking at like the weird development history of like engines you know and how many of them can be traced back to like gold source and the quake engine there's like still like vestigial elements of like quake in some modern games like some of like the lighting algorithm stuff or just just weird timing things i don't know it's uh it's been way too long just like thinking about game engines and being like this is so cool if only i cared enough to make a game but other, but i love to just look around games poke around behind the scenes <laughs> i really loved uh playing through srb2 when i first discovered it which was a few years ago and i was and for a while i was like you know building a sonic game on doom isn't that crazy sonic's the bullet sonic's the, he's, <laughs> it's so fast. Yeah. Sonic's the bullet People don't think about Doom as like a game where you go fast, but that is a game where you can be moving around pretty fast. You know, that was back when they made game protagonists, you know, you don't hold a button to run. You're just fucking going, man. (laughs) Gordon Freeman is just like, I'm just fucking going, man. I'm just moving. Right. Well, maybe uh, Roboblast 3 will be made then in in Half-Life, right? (laughs) we'll see yeah, yeah just, just slowly porting like, into some other slightly less archaic engine but still 20 plus years old right. i like that idea i like that uh i mean i've thought i've literally thought about like maybe i should just like make a quake map because that seems easier than like doing some making some fucking unity 5 fucking project i don't give a shit this is my hot take is like hd graphics were the worst thing to happen to games because now it's like well people are learning 8x bigger 
people are finally coming around to the low poly renaissance. I mean, it's not like there's a lot of people who are sort of resistant to that. I mean, there's there's still people out there who don't even like pixel art. They're like, it looks old. You know what I mean? But like, I feel like people of taste are coming around to the low poly look. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of great games on the Saturn that really crushed in that department. I mean, Saturn also has a great 2D library. It's just most of those never left Japan, unfortunately. Mm hmm. Right. Saturn is criminally underrated. I think it is one of the best systems. Like it just it just suffered from a lot of other things. It had a it's such a poor like perception in the West. It would kinda of blew mm -hmm. my mind to realize like and people in Japan actually like pretty fondly remembered the Saturn and it didn't do that badly. I mean it didn't I mean it's it wasn't the PlayStation, but it was you know, it put up numbers over there. In my mind, I don't know. I didn't realize just how much of a flop in financially the N sixty four was because it was so culturally like people wouldn't stop talking about yeah. Ocarina of Time stuff. And I, I love the N sixty four, I'm not being a hater. It just was like, damn, you know. Yeah. PlayStation really made a mess those the playstation <laughs> playstation 2 those two generations they really came along and drank everyone's milkshake sony should have stayed in their lane you know if only i mean it's i, I know it's man. like the most hypothetical people always ponder this and always bring it up but i mean it's crazy we actually almost had a timeline where nintendo and sony just partnered up and they just worked together they said, nintendo didn't be like i'm gonna go with phillips phillips seems like a better bet than sony over here <laughs> like they really could have just made a nintendo playstation and then i don't even know they would have just they literally would have like rounded up and killed every sega executive if that console came out it would have done that well like they would have had they would have made like negative 100 billion yen and they would have had to be sent to debtor's oh, wow. jail and be executed right we would have gotten sonic and mario at the olympic games way earlier oh man exactly. that would, would have been awesome man. instead of izzy oh right <laughs> instead of izzy, izzy and the I secret have, rings somewhere. oh i would have loved sonic to be the mascot of the 96 olympics and oh my uh, gosh yeah, yeah yeah that would have been great if like after the dreamcast sonic's like sonic is not going to be in any video games ever again sonic adventure 2 is the last Sonic game but we'll still like rent out sonic to be like an olympic mascot <laughs> or something because he's still such a fun character he'll go with mcdonald's toys and shit yeah people sonic... still people will look back following like remember those sonic games it's too bad that they just couldn't make any more because <laughs> you know sega ended and then they just all like it just dissolved into the wind my eyebrows always raise i i'm not saying that the game is bad uh but sonic and the black knight there seems to be like a lot of resurgence in people being like this game's actually really good uh i haven't played it so i i can't verify that uh, i did kind of like secret rings at the time but it definitely strikes me as a thing of like oh well it probably just came out or you played it at a certain age or it was one <laughs> of your first games and then that then you grew yeah. up I, we used to we used to joke about this back in 2007 2008 like i can you even believe someday there's gonna be little kids who play sonic 06 and they're gonna like in the, you know 18 years from now they're gonna be online defending it won't that be funny and it <laughs> happened and you know what i agree with them they were right actually it was good the whole time <laughs> well i mean it's just so funny now because like if you you can be a fan of that game and have only ever played like project 06 you know what i mean it's like and just right. i don't know that game is more of a meme than a game at this point but it's this is you're completely right the exact same thing is happening with those other wii games which again i, I actually never really did a serious like i'm gonna actually sit and like play and try and beat these games i only ever like messed around with them for an hour and they seem like they're pretty bad to be honest like it seems like like they would be fun for a little while and there's probably some mechanical depth again i'm not i'm not being a hater since i haven't really put in the time to try and learn them but um but at the same time you know a sonic game doesn't have to be perfect it can just have really great style and if if you play it as a kid like there are games like I mean I probably you just have a kid as a kid you have so much more patience for bullshit you can just power through that you do not have the patience to deal with this kind of shit today like I wouldn't I don't even know if I would love Sonic you know one and two so much if I played them for the first time today but when I was a kid I was like oh I'll just game over 48 times that's normal I mean that's just what you're supposed <laughs> to do when you're playing a video game and just go through the first stage over and over until you have it memorized like that is such a foreign concept now but at the time I was like well this is normal yeah. this is, of course is how you play games so of course there's kids who probably have the same memory with those Wii games and you know, and, and other boost games, other games. I mean, there's, I don't even know, we're, we're not that far off from the Sonic Forces defenders coming online and activating their neurons. <laughs> That's right. That, that game will be 10 years old in three years. Isn't that exciting to think yeah. about? Uh, is that exciting? <laughs> uh, <laughs> that new sonic game that just came out that new so right oh god it was uh it it it, it, it i mean up I, until so frontiers weird. it literally was the new sonic game like, that it was, is true it's, it was you don't, the you, new don't one. Con you don't consider team sonic racing to be a mainline uh, sonic title i <laughs> was so like that game could have been so good and i still would have been like where's the rest of the sega characters i loved all-star racing i love the transform yeah. gimmick and i loved all the all other uh, third-party character or not you know what i mean like the other sega right. transform is so good yeah, I love like, I still have transformed and again I'm not I'm not even saying Team Star Race is bad I'm just saying like it was I couldn't I just couldn't even bring myself to really get into it and then it seems like 
if they had like pumped it up full of like crazy deep cut dlc characters maybe i would have been like poke my head in but they just like abandoned it right away when it i don't know it didn't seem like i don't know again i also was never what the hell is team racing i thought racing was like an individual sport do they have like team golf games too or like what is going on here <laughs> they're like sonic heroes but in cars yeah yeah right it is it's sonic heroes in cars and Similar to Sonic Heroes, the characters are way too chatty. Like Sonic is like saying these <laughs> like, "Ooh, epic stunt fail!" Like, ah, don't, don't right. talk. It's one of those things where it's like, yeah, in like there was like in level chatter for characters in Sonic Forces, which is a good idea. It was just super fucking yeah. annoying, and I never wanted to hear it because they just were never saying anything I wanted to hear. But like the idea of characters talking during a race is not a bad idea. It's just yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Again, not to like put the writers on blast, but it wasn't like, you know. Uh, Oscar Wilde level quotations I was hearing. <laughs> no, that was that was the uh swan song of, of Pontac and Graf. This team right. sounds great thing. Oh, again, Omega I, has a pretty good line if you hit him, he says <laughs> activating pain sensors. Which, I'm sure there's some I, good I, quotes yeah. like I, I do believe, like I said, I mean even even like colors had good bits like the Eggman announcements. It wasn't like it was all bad wall to wall, but for sure. <laughs> mm -hmm. I uh the Eggman I don't know. announcements are great. I just, I just I think about this a lot. Like you're Omega, why would you activate your own pain sensors? You could just not. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the most honest thing to do. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, Omega. I, if hopefully Shadow, the resurgence of Shadow also leads to Omega being more prevalent. He's a fun <laughs> character, and uh, you know I was gonna say also more Rouge, but then it's like I still this isn't even like it doesn't matter. It's in like critique, but like I just can't get over that they just try to make rouge one of the team in sonic prime i was like rouge is not one of the fucking team she's not the fifth member after amy like what the what the fuck is going on here this is this is wrong this is wrong like i got used to it but i, I just couldn't get over that they're like what is going on here like why are you trying to make rouge is this supposed to be team dark what's going on here Where, where's omega what's going on but no I, it, like i said it's not like a serious critique but i just thought that was interesting again i get it from a marketing perspective you know you gotta have two girls duh sonic's gone woke no, just, no, it's, but it's like a uh, just I, like power I, I, rangers you had to have two girls exactly. i mean if you're gonna have if you're gonna have to add a fifth i mean All i right. guess shadow would feel even weirder so obviously i'm fine with whatever they're doing there so right. i don't I think, know they could have done a power rangers thing right where in the u.s it's two girls but in in japan rouge is replaced by a guy because the that yellow range should have done it yeah. i would have loved then i can make a whole video like, look at the difference between the japanese <laughs> prime and the american prime Oh man, right. That that's at least a one point three million view video, exactly. right? Exactly. People love when you compare two things. People <laughs> love that. I don't know why. Oh right. You can make a video where you compare uh Sonic 2 to Breath of the Wild, and you're exactly. like, wow. Like, this is how Breath of the Wild completely fails as a platformer. <laughs> oh man, that's two point seven million views. Yeah. You just gotta learn how to be negative. I mean, sometimes being negative, like I don't know. I, I'm not like, I guess I give that vibe sometimes. I'm not like people sometimes will like, oh, dude, Sonic 4. Remember that? It's like, dude, I don't think about Sonic 4. I made those videos, so I never had to think about those games again. I'm not like sitting, I don't wake up every morning going, God, I fucking hate Sonic 4. God, that game sucks so bad. I mean, that game does suck, <laughs> but I don't, I don't think about it. <laughs> what? I haven't stopped thinking about it since the day it was late. Uh... I, had, I had to turn off those subroutines because they're just going on on loop in the background, taking up my processes. I need those. That I think about other Sonic related things. That's right. There's I a lot if, of Sonic things. I wonder if people will come to defend Sonic 4 episode one, but I think people might have been. Certainly, we all would have felt less pain. Our pain sensors would not have been activated if they had just called it Sonic Mobile. Or Sonic yeah. WiiWare. I literally Sonic, have no Sonic issue with that game. Because I would just be like, yeah. people like, dude, Sonic Mobile sucks. Like, dude, it's, it's, Sonic, it's a mobile game. Who gives a right. shit? It was only because they were like right. trying to be Sonic 4. And again, I quote unquote get it if you're the marketing exec in charge of selling that one game and you don't care about like franchise integrity, diminishing <laughs> the brand, whatever, all any of that bullshit. That's for someone else to worry about. But it's like, I don't know. And I episode two, of course, has Defenders. And I mean, I get that. It too is not that bad. I mean, it's not yeah. good. I would never play it willingly or any other 2D Sonic game really. But like... It's only one that I like have a deep, passionate hatred towards, really. And even yeah. then, it's like, it, it, is it even worth it? It's Sonic the Mobile. Why am I getting mad at Sonic the Mobile game? It's like, just because it's called Sonic 4. And I, 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 I already explained that I know that that's the only reason I care. But I'm still getting mad at it. Well, it's because it's insulting. It's outright insulting. It it's, really was. At the time, its form and its when they came out, especially, too, because we were just desperate. We were like, come on, man. Right. Give us another good duty Sonic we game. Now this. that Sonic yeah. Mania exists, I can be like, well okay, we have the real Sonic 4. I can just play that. I don't have to care about Sonic the Mobile and pretend like 
It was an insult, but who cares? I mean, we, yeah. we deserved it every now and then. We're getting a little too high in our britches, thinking we deserved a good Sonic game. Yeah. <laughs> Especially since we got, like, what, Generations right afterwards, and that was a good Sonic game. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we... Generations and Colors were, like, right around the same time, weren't they? Right. Well, yeah, it was Episode 1, Colors, Generations. I, I, I think the CD port was before Generations, and then Episode 2 came out. 2012 and that cd port was such an anomaly for such a long time like it really mm -hmm. thought like we would never get you know widescreen versions of those other games nice. and uh you know for all the issues i have with origins at least they did do that and it's it, it's and if for all the anyone who has issues with those you know what it's not like they sent a cease and desist to sonic 3 air and all that stuff too so you know if that bothers you then you have options my friend and if you're just joe normie then you're not even gonna give a shit so who cares i mean obviously it'd be great I don't need to go into a whole Sonic Origins rant, but you know, the fact it even exists is like, what the hell? It, it just, it was even hard to imagine like six years ago, Sega even really wanting to acknowledge that. Like the idea that they would even have to acknowledge the Michael Jackson thing by not including the music, you know what I mean? Like that yeah. was like, what? Yeah. Oh man, those new tracks, the new old yeah, tracks. Yeah, I, 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 tracks. if the people who like them, I'm actually happy for them. I, I, it's really cool yeah. finding out that those beta tracks were like the, the original originals or whatever. And, you know, they sound better with the Genesis sound font. But I would you just mm -hmm. I just the, 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 the real Sonic 3 Michael Jackson tracks are just too iconic. They're too good. I mean, you just can't replace music that good without bringing in something that good. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. I do like those, like... It is funny, by Sega, the way, you just... Sega PC people, though, who are like, yes, finally, things are back the way they should be. <laughs> yeah. Sonic, at the Sonic Symphony, like, there's a beautifully arranged one medley, a beautifully arranged two medley, a beautifully arranged <laughs> CD medley, and then mm -hmm. Sky Sanctuary from yeah, 3, Sky Sanctuary. and then moving on. <laughs> right. Uh, I remember when the, they did the live stream of that, it's, like, our chat was just like, you cowards. They, they were. They should, <laughs> Play I mean, hard time. I wish it was as easy as just, just deal with the Michael Jackson estate. State. I mean, uh, it's only like one of the most like, you know, Michael Jackson is this state doesn't like need to be working with Sega. They don't give a fuck. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like they have they can make millions of licensing them out for like, I don't know, a Super Bowl commercial or some shit like they it is so beyond what they give a fuck about. It's not like Sega, like they would have to be like prostrating themselves, like begging them and it wouldn't even work. So it's like at the end of the day, can I really be that mad at them for not like if you put me in charge, I'm not saying I could sort it out, although I would. I would love to just pretend like I could just get a job. Being like, please, I'll, I'll I'll deal with the Michael Jackson people. Just leave it to me. Yeah, <laughs> you just befriend all the other Jackson kids, right? Right. right. I just I, who are not my kids way into the Michael Jackson the YouTube community, and then <laughs> see if I can get, <laughs> get in touch in the with the, 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 the whoever whoever's and, in charge over there. Because <laughs> I actually I don't know like why did they switch from Nakamura to pursuing Michael Jackson. Well, I think Michael Jackson sort of offered himself. Well, they already had a pre-established oh. relationship with Jackson, right. with Moonwalker. Right. And Jackson was a confessed fan of Sonic the Hedgehog. So I think it was just like, yeah, I'll do it. That's a terrible Jackson. Uh, he <laughs> said, yeah, I'll do it. Uh, yeah. It was worth it, asking him because he was like, I mean, he, you know, the level of fame was pretty oh. high let's put it that way if you weren't around for the the whole michael jackson thing right right you if, only if know a, him from south yeah, park is, <laughs> if a certain thing, era right if a certain thing hadn't happened that it would have been like michael jackson's face like he was a pretty big deal cover. okay he was a guest star in an episode of the simpsons for god's sake <laughs> <laughs> that's true man and he also uh was in the whiz that's all yeah I that's also yeah. true that's also true keith how are you doing <laughs> <laughs> Doing great. Yeah. Keith, what's your favorite Michael Jackson album? Oh, uh, probably like the, the one everyone knows. The, uh, the bad <laughs> one. Which one? Bad. Bad? That's a terrible album to choose. That's a, the, there's no, no. Your what? favorite. Right. That bad is the, the follow up to Thriller, which could never match the heights. I mean, Off the Wall was, was huge. Thriller, Thriller was even huger. Bad was big, but um, right. And then you got Dangerous. I'm just listing mm -hmm. off Michael Jackson albums because I'm like, I feel like there's only really seven. I I love it when we stumble into another pool of David knowledge. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, then I'll ask Cybershell. Cybershell, what's your favorite and least favorite Michael Jackson album? Uh, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, what, what what was his last album? Like Invincible. Yeah. Invincible was the last <laughs> one. That's probably my least favorite yeah. one. Uh, the one with the Marlon Brando video. I guess I do. Like I kind of like Man in the Mirror. I like anything that I can remotely relate back to the Sonic too. You know, and also you know, I, I'm I'm sort of like biased as a Sonic fan. Oh right. So then this question should be easy. What's your favorite Janet Jackson song? 
Oh, uh, I, I, I only like her from her Super Bowl performances. That's my only. Oh. <laughs> that's my favorite song. Uh, I like her song that sounds like uh, the Sonic 06 uh, forest music. Yeah, yeah I, I like the song that sounds like Bridge Zone. Uh, what is, what's it called? Oh. Together Again? Yeah. There you go. Uh, well, there's a reason we're having a there's there's a Sonic symphony and there's not a Michael Jackson symphony. Think about that. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> One of them is yeah. clearly more of an enduring pop culture icon. <laughs> and the other is dead. Yeah. Uh, Sonic will never <laughs> die. Even even when all humans are dead in dust and the world is in post nuclear Sonic is just a concept. He's just a character. He'll still be alive. That's, as soon yeah. as waiting for an alien to discover one of these games, and then we'll infect that alien species with their own kinds of Sonic brain worms. And they'll uh-huh. be having debates about secret rings and Black Knight. <laughs> uh Okay, we've got to go soon, but uh, Cybershell, Keith, John, Stack, I want to ask you both of this question. Because we know there are some, Michael Jackson was a Sonic fan. We know that John Carpenter is a Sonic fan. Who is the most surprising celebrity that you are pretty sure <laughs> has played Sonic? We often speculate, like we've speculated about off, like the Beatles. Like, Do you think Paul McCartney is, he's, like, eh, he's got enough grandkids. We think Paul McCartney's probably played Sonic. George Harrison, maybe he played Sonic Adventure 2 before he died. He died. <laughs> the in, last thing he theoretically did. Possible. Theoretically possible. And Ringo, we think, you know, we, we don't think has. But, uh, <laughs> but who's somebody that you wouldn't think is a Sonic fan that you think might genuinely be a Sonic fan? Secret Sonic fan? Definitely President Joe Biden. There's no fucking way he <laughs> hasn't played Secret Rings at the very least. It's probably more of a Black Knight head, but... He's definitely yeah. at least watched the game Grumps play 06. I mean, there's no way. He's the president, for God's sake. <laughs> <laughs> he probably got superstars early. <laughs> you know, he's like, you know, he's literally on a call right now. He's like, who the fuck leaked that Sonic movie shit? Who the fuck leaked that? I bet, he has, forward to that. I bet he gets the Tokyo Toy Show demo. That's probably what's in Area 51. <laughs> If only I would. You don't even understand how many sins I would forgive Sega or anyone who releases that. I mean, they just they got that's got to exist. It's so disheartening to think it might not exist out there somewhere. It has to. It's like the One Piece, except it's it's a Sonic beta <laughs> instead of whatever the One Piece is—a bunch of freaking gold or something. Who cares? Uh, the the one- friends we made along the way—that's bullshit. <laughs> the real thing that matters is Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. All oh, right, Keith, you were about to answer. We should oh, let you uh, answer. I, I'm just, you know, like you, any any young actor nowadays, you can probably assume they've, they've played Sonic, like any celebrity under a certain age. Uh, like it's a given. They, they, they must right. be familiar. You know, I went Sonic. old as a joke, but it's actually like, <laughs> the, whenever I hear about young people being into Sonic, I'm like, what? <laughs> why what why why are you in this i mean i'm in this because like, i played it when i was in the fucking 90s i didn't have a choice i wasn't indoctrinated when he was at the peak of his cultural like i still i, I didn't have a choice why are pe- people are like voluntarily getting into sonic this is insane it's, yeah. is like, sonic why? like was that his peak or is like the peak happening I now because no. i i, it seems yeah. like- I guess you're right you know i used to say that but you're right the movies you're right i always underestimate the actual but- amount like you know when like jimmy fallon and you know jim carrey are like we're talking about sonic the hedgehog oh, in, f- in front of the studio audience it's like oh yeah that is people weird. have to hear about they have to hear about sonic they all can't right. pretend like he doesn't exist like i know they're all doing like they all did during 2006 2007 right you never had naka go on the tonight show talking to jay leno <laughs> although i would have loved to have seen that the time i always bring it up but the the macy's day balloon that's the one that's the only indicator for popularity that i trust and sonic was in it and then he was he was in it again though not that long ago i guess right he has had a modern appearance right 93 was probably the first like super cultural sonic year and then i guess a smaller wave would have been 2004 with sonic x that went over a, a generation Right. And yeah, also, yeah, Heroes and shit going cross platform like Heroes did sell a lot. I don't know, actually, exact numbers, but I know. Yeah, there was a sort of I mean, the Dreamcast was a very limited market of only Dreamcast owners, unfortunately, were able to appreciate these Dreamcast games. Oh, man, I still I just I think about the Dreamcast. I think about the Dreamcast a lot. It's so it's a, right. It's the amount of Dreamcast painful. owners were it was it was sadly a little mm-hmm. less than the amount of people who owned a PS2. So when he made the Heroes, there a little was bit. slightly more reach. Yeah, slightly. Right. Yeah, I mean, I guess Heroes would have been completely different though if the Dreamcast had ex- continued to exist. Yeah, it wouldn't have. It wouldn't have. The Heroes it feels so have. designed to be like yeah the onboard point for a new generation of kids. We probably would have gotten Adventure yeah. Three, and then yeah. everyone would have been like, "I can't wait for Adventure 4. Uh, right. Or we'll still be talking about Adventure Four constantly. Right. I mean, this is what happens. Uh, thinking about 
Michael Jackson. Uh-huh. Think about uh I think you said Jay Leno. <laughs> yeah, Jay Leno. Well, if he, he was the host of the Tonight Show. Yeah. So that makes me think there's no way Johnny Carson knew what Sonic was. No way. No. But this no. leads me to this question, which will be the last question, and then David will play us out. <laughs> he rushed for 2,000 yards uh, for the first time in the uh, National Football League as a Buffalo Bill. Uh, he was a frequent punchline on the Jay Leno Tonight Show. Do we think OJ Simpson has ever played a Sonic the Hedgehog game? Uh, well, we can we can figure this out right now. We just got to go to his fucking cameo page and be like, hey, bro, you ever <laughs> play Sonic the Hedgehog? Give me the, give me the lowdown. Give me the canted answers. I mean, I think he has a cameo, or maybe he just posts short videos that I see on Twitter sometimes. Yeah. But, yeah. but don't you think uh, he would just say what we want him to say in that case? He would, I, I don't know. I mean, cameo. you're, you're right. It's the real right. truth. It's like a quantum mechanic thing. We're just asking the question changes the result. We'd have to like, we'd have to like, you got to ask him him. which one. Right. Yeah. We'd have to be like, did you ever play any Sega Genesis games back in the day? Or, I mean, I guess that maybe he, maybe he was more into Black Knight or Secret Rings. I don't know. But, uh, oh, he yeah. really got into the Wii era. Right. Again, gotta, the amount of, like, the amount of celebrities who I am aware they have to have heard of Sonic versus who have actually, like, sat down and played one. I don't know. That's a good question. That's right. a good question. Uh, do you think Timothy Chalamet, star of Wonka, has oh, played? That was Sonic not the Timothy I thought you were going to say. Oh man! Oh, what, 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 he's a gamer. He was at the Gamer Awards, so yeah, he was I mean, at the had, Gamer. Awards. If he hadn't played Sonic, they—I don't even think they let you in the Game Awards. If you can't, they just put you down in front of Marble Zone. And you're like, if you can't beat this, you're not getting in the fucking door. That's right. I was talking. Oh, rewinding way back to the beginning about let's plays and stuff. I was watching the, the Japanese Sonic YouTube channel, the official one, mm -hmm. and there, there's, there's these people whose names I don't know because I don't speak Japanese, and they've been playing Sonic One, and I was, I was feeling some of those emotions of like, you don't know what you're doing, do you? And it's, it's funny, but I'm not like mad. I'm just like, I am so confused. And it's so funny. <laughs> the, yeah, because you can just put someone in front of Sonic 2 and they'll have fun for, you know, up until a certain point, you know, they don't have to be so great at the game. Whereas you put someone in front of Sonic 1, they'll have, you know, fun for Green Hill Zone and then boom, it's over. They're not having any more fun. Uh, that's important. I mean, in 91, it was the most fun because there was nothing else like it. Well, yeah, because, you know, you would put it, you would obviously just like the commercial, you'd go home and you put your Mario Brothers 1 TV next to your Sonic Bros TV in order yeah. to compare and contrast how fast the games are. And you'd be like, Sonic is so much better. But now they, they go home and they put Fortnite on the TV on the left and Sonic on the TV on the right. And they're <laughs> making all these unfair comparisons. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. I uh, they sh they should bring back just TVs being next to each other, like in Back to the Future Part Two. In the future, you had that that the right all those TV channels, and yeah. it was like a parody. But now it's like that's really what's going on on TikTok with the Subway Surfers gameplay. And I don't know, I don't use TikTok. Right. I'm too old. They wouldn't. I tried to sign up, and they're like, "Your account is too old. You're too old to use this. <laughs> <laughs> Go away." Oh. No. Um, but yeah, no, I completely agree. Uh, and we got to, just as a reminder for all our fellow old heads, we got to be scooping up these CRTs. You see a CRT on the side of the road, you have to save that bad boy and donate it to a good home because they're not making any more of these fucking things, okay? When they're gone, they're gone. Um, That's true. That's a good point. All right. Well, unless you start a business and start making brand new CRTs. I feel like it's it's harder to make a CRT than you might think. I feel like it's not as easy to go you up could, and like this is really really one, right? type thing. <laughs> and it is it's magic. I, I had to write this long. I had to write. I wrote. There's this like nonfiction podcast series that I was like freelance writing for, and it was like about the history of the TV uh, and how Phil Farnsworth came up with the idea for the CRT, and then it got ripped off by big corporations, and then they sold it and took when he died but he went on like a game show being like i actually invented the tv can you believe it and they gave him a pack of cigarettes and then that, was, <laughs> that was it there was one appearance on just television, one pack not he a, invented not yeah that, carton? Got maybe a carton I think okay at a, least a I, carton I, I, what was the brand <laughs> this is important but crts though you're totally right like the way that they work is insane it's it's magic it's alchemy it's crazy uh you should look into it and try to understand it so i had to try to understand it to then communicate it back in simple language and I can't There's remember. There's a laser gun like, in there, right? It's yeah. like a ray Magnet, gun like, inside yeah. the laser and it like hits the screen like in a, a bazillion, like hundreds of times a second. And like, it's, it's not like a pixel special. lighting up. Like you can look in and see the little like thing on the light, but a, like a laser has to hit that and illuminate it. And when you watch it in slow motion, you can like see it tracking across. It's like, damn, that's so much cooler than my stupid monitor, my stupid, ugly, <laughs> nice, way better resolution monitor. 
<laughs> right, we should just go back in time when All in the Family was new. That's all you need. And TVs used to weigh like 800 pounds. That's how you knew they were good, okay? Because you can just move <laughs> them around all willy-nilly. You have to like hire the movers to move your big old TV. <laughs> we we had a huge TV, a huge like projection CRT. Like a one that needed like floor supports? Yeah, like a, yeah. He, my, my mother won it. In a, in a contest i don't even know how it was just this huge tv uh would be plugged in the I, th- I think at the time we only had the nes and played super mario brothers the first one for a little bit and it was burned in like, forever complete- <laughs> yeah and right well because it's, at some point my mother was like oh you're not allowed to play video games on this because it'll ruin the tv and i'm like what so by the time i got a genesis i had to play it on this little seven inch color tv in my room which of course was still mind-blowing because it's sonic and sonic is the greatest thing that's ever happened in the history of humanity but i would have loved to have played it on that huge 40 50 inch whatever (laughs) tv uh which eventually broke because my mother threw something and hit the tv and it there was a big old crack it was like whoops why'd she throw it well that's fine (laughs) <laughs> i guess that's it whoa can you believe we once again recorded another episode of sonic weekly i don't i figured by this point we all would have went our separate ways and started our own uh projects which of course were never as successful as the original because we're trying to uh, emulate things of course if we're trying to emulate the beatles maybe we would be well i guess we would never be bigger than ourselves but one of us would certainly become Ringo Starr. And if you know who would become Ringo Starr, then you should, of course, let us know. But before you let us know, hey, what am I supposed to be talking about here? You've listened to another episode of Sonic Weekly and you haven't yet. You should subscribe to this wonderful program of ours of an ending that I never script and never think about before I start hearing this music. Right. Subscribe on your podcast. You're doing great. I, well, yeah, sure. Thank you. You're doing it. Your podcatcher of choice is, of course, what you use to subscribe to Sonic Weekly, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, uh, Podcast Addict is what we're pushing. Um, Stitcher's dead. No one used it. It died a long time ago, but I always think about it sometimes. And of course, if you want to get in contact with us, you send us a sweet, cool email at sonicweeklypodcast at gmail.com and you write, hey, here's a letter. Maybe we'll read that letter. And more importantly, if you want to talk to us, if you want to talk to like minded Sonic fans and join our Discord server, you have to email us. Otherwise, you'll never get that link. Yep, that's the price you pay. Can I guess it? Yeah, I mean, you could try to guess it, but you might accidentally join a different Sonic server. And who would do that? What about thank yous? Hey, I'm getting there, man. Oh, okay, all right. I don't want to rush you, please. You don't want to rush me, continue, right? Continue with your podcatcher. Uh... Well, yeah, I have to talk about podcast because I... Did you know that podcasts started before they really coined the term? That's right. Back in the day, people used to stream on Shoutcast. People used to talk about mp3s and they were very low quality i mean i could thank people i could thank uh i could thank smoothies for the edit who couldn't join us today of course i can thank our guests cybershell the the one the only cybershell and the second the only keith john stack <laughs> you know sitting there watching us contemplating us i just like to say thanks for having me on really quick and uh, if you're one of my fans who's only listening to this episode because i'm on it you you have to like and subscribe this podcast and i can tell if you don't and if you don't do it <laughs> we'll never be friends and i'll, and I'll hate you forever <laughs> that's right we got cyber shell in our quarter now and i didn't thank everyone else who am i i right i, I gotta thank Bo and grant because they'll be left out if i don't oh hey thanks david <laughs> thank you david were you fishing for that Keith, how are you feeling? I'm feeling good. I'm feeling very thankful. Okay, good. All right. I think this is uh, a, a good point to end then. And uh, we'll just let Smoothies sort out the dead bodies. Thank you, Smoothies. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. 